Hello, I'm Eric Klein. I'm running the first session of talks. Uh, I'm going to keep these brief. So our first speaker is Dr. Li Fu Chang. He is the director of Moses. Thank you. I'm here to talk about the topic of design for yield as advanced semiconductor processes. Yeah. So before we do uh, go to that research topic, I want to actually first introduce a little bit about Moses because I know some of them, some of you do not know us very well. So what does the Moses service do? We're part of ISI as a division, and what we do is that we facilitate the silicon wafer fabrication. We arrange for appropriate fabrication schedules for customers' chip projects. And then we gather customers' designs and work towards the completion of tape-out requirements provided by the foundry, where the foundry is the fab that does the manufacturing tasks. And we deliver the completed design database to the foundry's fabrication, and we deliver the chips back to the customer upon successful fabrication. There are actually a huge amount of details among these tasks which some of them I'll touch upon in subsequent slides, but you can see the big picture here. And here is our collaboration scope, where I, I uh, say it is the most is a collaboration with foundries of different semiconductor uh, technologies. So on the first column, you can see the foundries that we work with. That include uh, all of the four major foundries in the world. Global Foundries, which was inherited from IBM, is the first ever foundry we work with followed by TSMC, which is also more than 35 years with us. And Intel and Samsung are the very recent and new, but very important addition that we add in the collaboration. And across the table, we can see the feature size of the technology nodes all the way from 330 nanometers down to the advanced 12 nanometer. So these are the feature size of the process technology. If you, uh, I think most of you heard about the very famous law of the Moore's law. Moore's law describes the evolution of the semiconductor process technology that enables these feature sizes. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so, uh, what is design for yield, right? So here, I on top of it, I have this picture and flow of a design to a chip flow, where uh, to the left, uh, the left is the first like your sketch paper where you want to architect your functionality of a chip. Like I want to do a microcontroller for my uh, very advanced car, right? Which is a lot of IoT, but I need to control the control and function out of these for the benefit of the car operation. And uh, you, then you, could, you will go through the details such as uh, come out with an analyst, uh, work with the fab, and, and also to get the PDK to design your circuits, do a plasma route to compose the IP into a GDS, and you work with uh, teams like Moses to uh, do the tip out and master the preparation, which includes like physical verification DLC and uh, the passing and the uh, uh, meeting the requirement for the uh, MPW uh, merge DS. And the fab will do the fabrication with you, and then you get the wafer out and dice them and the package them so that you can get the package die that you can receive back to implement your system, such as a car or any computer that you want to do, right? So here uh, the, you can see also the three arrows describing the majority of work was done by which kind of group of company? Designers, Moses, and Foundry. Yeah. So uh, we will not go through the details anymore on this flow, but then yield uh, describes a very essential property of the fabrication that it measures the percentage of dyes on a fabricated semiconductor wafer that perform all of the specified functionalities. Of course, first of all, the first spec for it to follow is that it has to survive, right? It has to be alive. And then it will function over the specified functionalities, on current, off current, power assumption, area, so on and so forth, up to the, the uh, very thing that you wanted to have from the step point of your sketch, right? And the design for yield is then optimize your design to maximize the percentage of yield. And uh, we, let, we will elaborate this uh, DFY uh, content in the next slide. So here, uh, this slide is a little bit busy, but I'm gonna just, again, say it uh, briefly, but concisely to you. Uh, so the, there are three parts of this slide. On the left, you can see the manufacturing, which is uh, represented by different process modules. For example, the one that's highlighted, uh, photolithography, will be the lithography process that pattern your design from the mask to your silicon, uh, at least the photoresist. 
So the Moore's law actually is focused on this technology. Um, and also like the other one is CMP, that is the uniformity process that makes sure that uh, each layer that you deposit on your silica is planarized before it goes to the next one, right? And in the middle, uh, uh, sorry, to the right is the design flow, which is also simplistic but comprehensive. Like it includes the physical design, which is primarily the plasma route or some kind of FPGA, uh, physical verification, and we, I say uh, DFY sign off covering the uh, yield. It will be uh, very representative of all of the advanced nodes. Master preparation, mass generation. Uh, in the middle is the so-called DFI flow, where I adopt the flow that is published by Samsung as a foundry. Uh, you can see the, 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 like the check items, the purpose, and target concerns. I want to just say one feature of this table, which is that it covers some of the process modules, which are uh, photo, uh, photodiscography and a chemical uh, mechanical uh, polish. It is actually very important and covers, the mo I would say, the most complicated process uh, of the evolution of technology, but it doesn't cover all, right? There are some blocks in the module that are not uh, quite mentioned or covered by the flows. So, uh, sorry, I jumped two slides. Yeah. So here we identify outstanding and priority DFY problems that have not yet been covered in either academia or industry in any significant way. I would say the essence is it has zero coverage today, right? So uh, I'm gonna start with the left table. The priority DFY problems that I want, I want to have done with Moses, uh, there are two of them. The first one is the plasma charging effects, and the second one is thermal mechanical stress effects. They uh, cover uh, basically all of the process technology nodes in, on the advanced side. That, what that means is the uh, 16 nanometer and beyond, right? And uh, on the right, that we can see that it covers uh, uh, some of the other box that was not covered yet. Plasma effects are the charging process that we do in the edge and thin film and. Uh, uh, with the clean processes. Uh, so when it's associated and applied to the dummy metals, which who are there to unify and uniform your densities, it has a problem as you know that dummy metals are not connected to ground or any signal. So when the charges are done, they go to the next layer, the charges are getting accumulated. And it's there and acts like an antenna, right? It exerts static or dynamic electromagnetic waves. And it will damage physically your wafers. So we are thinking about uh, having a grounded or connected dummy flow to prevent that from happening to the maximum amount. And the other one is the stress effects, which is coming with any layer, especially the backend intercan layers, that involves a thermal cycle, where we have to heat up to form a uniform crystalline uh, accumulation on your wafer, and then you have to cool down because then you have to do other steps that require a cooler temperature. And because of that, and because of the difference in the uh, thermal expansion coefficients on different materials, metals versus insulators, then you will have uh, you know, uh, stress being propagated, being uh, caused and propagated across your chip designs and also across the wafer. So it has problems about everything that stress could happen, right? Crack the elimination, and actually will be more severe with the advanced packaging options that we have today, 3D, IC, or the wafer alone packaging where uh, the wave of black packaging is actually a most, most of the task now, right? So, uh, and we are thinking about using stress relief cells to resolve it. And uh, we have ideas about how to uh, attract the stress and actually kind of cancel them in the middle across the design so it won't accumulate and got killed in, in, in the middle of its propagation. Yeah, so I wanna go to the conclusion where we have identified the high priority topics. I know I like go, to, go through with them uh, like fast, but you get the basic physics and ideas. And then uh, if we resolve them, and actually we have a concise plan actually in the backup slide about how to do about that, would bring better yield and reduce fabrication cycle times to our customers, which will be very true because I believe every one of our projects have these problems, uh, severe or not so severe, but it's omnipresent. And the benefit space will be most valuable when our customers decide to move the high volume production of their designs. And so we envision that flows uh, after we're done with it as an additional value added by the most service.
Thank you very much. And uh, I can take some questions, actually. I think. Yeah. yeah, great. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about who are the, who are the closest competitors and why are we better than them? Uh, we have several. The, the institute uh, called the uh, Silicon Manufacturing Aggregator or Brokerage have uh, several companies in the world, and each one of them would be our competitor. And why we would uh, we'll be better than them is, uh, I think there are several perspectives that would improve our quality, but with respect to these research topics, as I said, there's no such effort obviously shown in the academic presentation or even by the foundry's offerings. So it's clear to me that if we achieve that, then we clearly have the advantage that we have these unique power capabilities within our house. Yeah. All right. Alexei from Arlington office. So how much does it cost to make a small chip, let's say 100,000 transistors? <laughs> Asking for a friend. Yeah, so we do have this pricing table, uh, actually public uh, domain uh, information. Uh, this, it varies with respect to the area and technology and also with the fact. So it's kind of, uh, I would say a ballpark would be um, hundreds of thousands of dollars like that's to the thing that you mentioned. But I'm, I welcome you to talk to us continually to, to, to get uh, more precise quotes. Yeah, thank you. If we may, one more question. So I assume a lot of this is standard CMOS. Is there any support for more exotic uh, things like uh, we have a Yeah, logic, we do. We have a project called 9WG with Global Foundries which is a silicon photonics. So it's non-silicon. It's actually silicon photonics process. And we do have, also have silicon germanium as compared to silicon with global foundries as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Professor Burrell. Yeah, Peter Burrell from, from mostly campus and also ISI. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, so my question is uh, a bigger picture. So mm -hmm. traditionally, Moses has been viewed as a service organization. Right. Now you're showing us some very exciting research, ah. research that I'm sure many faculty would be interested in collaborating with. Can right. you talk about your vision of Moses for the future? Yeah. And how you plan to balance the mm. traditional needs as a customer mm. uh, service organization and mm -hmm. now emerging research. And yeah. Maybe the benefits of that. Exactly. So. The most service has existed as a supporting role to ISI. So when we generate a surplus of, benefit of the money, we actually, the ISI get that and spend to support our operations. So we have to continue to do that. I think our first priority is to deliver the projects and uh, take the appropriate benefits on that, profits. And then I would say these search research topics, first of all, is also aligned with our business, right? It improves the yield. So we work on the painkillers. And, but it will come as coupled with the second priority. Like when we have resources that can be, be well spent as, as we estimate on that, then we can go without it. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, Mike, sir.